Aliens, ghosts, the supernatural, conspiracies, a cup of coffee? Welcome to Caffeinated Conspiracies. I'm your host, Glenn. And I'm your host, Omer. We look at the eye-opening, the crazy, the unexplained. Do we give you answers? No. But do we shed some light on the weird and wonderful? Also, no. But we do look at different theories, plausible solutions, and even come up with our own. We aren't experts, ufologists, or scientists, but we are open-minded individuals and have an interest in the unknown. So put us in your pocket, grab a coffee, and let's dive into this week's episode. Join us as we dive into the waters of the lost city of Atlantis, a realm of myth and mystery that has captivated humanity for centuries. So grab your coffee and get ready to plunge into the depths of the unknown. So yes, welcome to the final episode of season one. We we, we made it! Ten full episodes! <laughs> this is where the show sinks. I thought it would have been cancelled after last week's episode with Dave on the show. Uh, again, thank you to Big Dave for joining us on our episode about the Titanic. It was great to have him on. And when after we stopped recording, he said he'd definitely love to come back again in the second season. Uh, we hope you liked him. Uh, if you have, let us know in the comments. And then that way we can bring him back and hopefully more guests in the second season. If you haven't liked him, we can make him disappear too. <laughs> he could be swimming with the fishes. Well, um, with today's topic, yeah. With today's well, topic, yeah. Fish people. Uh, fi- mer people? I-, I don't know. It depends on how you look at the lost city of Atlantis. Um, mm. There are so many different theories that, uh, and so many different myths. And, you know, and it, it, as I said at the start there, you know, it's one of the ones that has sort of been on the tip of everyone's tongue for all pretty much of humanity. You know, we've we've had... It's a big question is, was Atlantis real? You know, where it, if it was, where is it? How did it sink? And what happened? So I need to go to you first, Omer, as I do every week. Uh, where did your research take you? This one, I think it was the same as the Holy Grail and, Atl- and Ark of the Covenant one. It took me more into sort of movies than it did actual facts or anything around it. Like, I found, like, the base story of atlantis and where it came from but like anytime i tried to do any further research i just ended up in movies <laughs> so you're going down the route of sort of disney's atlantis starring michael j fox disney's atlantis aquaman like oh what was it the recent black panther has atlantis in it now yeah like it's everywhere it's like so ingrained in pop culture that you can't search Atlantis without finding so like a show about it, like Stargate. Yeah, like it's everywhere, it and is. it's annoying because it's so everywhere. Finding the facts about it got just hard to find. I found some of the base, like where the story originated from. Okay. I don't know if you found anything older, but I got that. So and that's about. The, the, well, the typical story of Atlantis, uh, where it come from, was from Plato. Um, he had it um, in, he, you know, he was telling the stories of Atlantis and how there was this big city um, with con- uh, made of concentric circles, two of water, three of land. Um, now, as I've done more of my research, now we we know we we know Plato's um, things and you know everything that he Philosopher. says, exactly. Take and it with a grain of salt. He's yeah, but he is still very well respected. Yeah, and he's yeah. I mean still to this day people do refer back to Plato as well in regards to some of the things he come up with. All right, granted, he was it a was philosopher though, not a historian. Exactly right. So this is where we need to take, as you said there, with a you know with a pinch of salt. Uh, in regards to all this, because apparently he got the story from one of his one of his students. Um, no, 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 it wasn't a student. It was a retelling of a scripture that he said he read from someone called Solon about two hundred and twenty years before him. Okay. So this is a guy he could not have met because there's no. two hundred and twenty years between them. Yeah. So he, he's saying I found a scripture from this guy who's telling a story from nine thousand years before him. Which means Atlantis sits somewhere in nine hundred ninety five hundred BC. Yeah, so and Plato told the story in uh, three hundred and sixty BC. 
Yeah, and he's saying the story that he was recounting or retelling was a story from 580 BC. Well, and that was and and Atlantis was sunk basically, basically nine thousand years before Solon. Yeah. Now, with that, with that reading that we got as well, Plato Wait, was sort of. Go ahead. But before you go on, no one can find the records of Solon's documentation. Right. So we've got we've got what Plato said, and Plato saying I took it from a different guy, but, but no not... records of the different guy. The, we, we know Solon existed. We just he never wrote down. There's nothing that anyone can. We find don't have anything wrote, written. Okay. Well, apparently in this text that he had, it was like I say, it described the city, also described the people as being like half god, half human. Um, yeah, they were the kids of Poseidon. Yeah, this is where they were referred to as the Aryan race. They were meant to be like the 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 that you know the the top of the food chain sort of human species. No, because you can't call them Aryan because Aryans were meant to be like perfect humans. They were demigods. Yeah, I think it was it's, it's Poseidon that have, it's... and Salito, the human yeah. woman who had five twin sons, which made the ten kings of Atlantis. That poor woman. <laughs> that poor woman. I mean, every birth, twins. <laughs> yeah. I bet, like, the last, like, set were just walking out of there. <laughs> well, in regards to sort of uh, the story of Atlantis, um, some ancient writers believe that uh, Plato made up the story, as, you know, you said that there was no proof of anything. Um, Aristotle... Uh, believed that Plato made up the story to teach us a philosophy lesson. Which but, is what he was known to do. Yeah, but what was the lesson? Because I don't think I've learned it. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lie. If you go off the original story, his lesson was the basically sin of man. Because when... So the original story is Poseidon and his human wife have ten kids... They've got each of the gods got given an island. Athena got Athens, clearly. Um, Poseidon got given Atlantis. First son of the the big giant line of twins was Atlantis, and that's where we get his name from. Yeah, Atla Atlas. Yeah. Yeah. Atlas. So each of the parts. So what you described earlier was just the city of Atlantis, not yeah. the island. The island was much bigger. It's that like twice the size of Spain. It's a huge landmass. Uh, what you've described earlier was just the city where the Was that the, the capital and over. things like that? Yeah. The cap yeah. That's where the concentric circles were. The rest of the island didn't have the concentric... It was just the, the capital, the temple of Salito. Yeah. I might be saying the name wrong. Either way, even me saying the name wrong doesn't matter because Plato says the, tran the names he used were translations from the original Egyptian names. So Atlantis, as you see it in all the movies, should not be like Roman or Greek architecture at all. It should be Egyptian. It's 9,000 years older and it's translated from Egyptian, so it should be closer to Egyptian, yeah. Mm. So that text civilization we're seeing in modern retellings of it. But yeah, the story goes that the sons being demigods themselves... And there weren't any other gods on the island. The only procreation they had was the humans of the island. Yeah. So each generation got less godly. So yeah, the next yeah. generation, like a quarter godly, the generation after that were one eighth, and it got down. And as they went down, more human nature got into them and greed got into them. Yeah. And that's when they went to war with Athens. Partway through the war with Athens, the ruling gods at the time weren't happy with them. And sunk Atlantis for its hubris. Yeah. Well, that, so that's that, the that, lesson that he's for, meant to have taught with it. Yeah. If we take the story aside and look at, let's let's put it as if it's a real. It was a real place. Let's say that. It, Atlantis it was, was it real. It's called Rome. <laughs> so we've got Atlantis, and. It's meant to have. It's meant to have been in this massive war with everybody else on the mainland because it was pretty much. It was its own island more than more than the way it's been described. You know, it, like you say, its it was own like island the, in the middle of the Atlantic. Yeah, 
So, so it's like it's like the most defensible area. Ever. And I don't know if anybody's sort of like clicking on here that majority of our episodes have now sort of gone full circle where we've talked about ancient Egypt, where we've talked about the Titanic being in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. You know, we're sort of like tying it all nicely up together here. So if it's meant to be in the middle of the Atlantic, which is where we believed it was, um, we were meant to have this fantastic... That's Plato said it was, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We were meant to have this fantastic island where they're warring with other factions of, you know, different continents and things like that. And they're meant to have had this like, advanced technology. Now, some theories go completely out there saying how uh, the Atlanteans helped build the pyramids and how they de- designed the Sphinx because... It was an Asian Atlantean god. And, you know, it, this is, like I say, it spirals. I mean, when you consider, yeah, when you consider it was, they were Egyptian and then translated to Greek. Yeah. And they are not, what is it, like 12? No, what year are we in? We're all like, it's 11,000 years old now. So it's like so far back before the pyramids were even built. They if they were the same people that helped build it, let's say they were the engineers who built most of the complex structures that we see today. And we're like, how did anybody have the ingenuity? If the Atlanteans had this it, advanced technology that they were the meant to I mean, have. Yeah. You know, when you slot we were... them in, it all makes sense. And mm-hmm. without them, we're, we're back to how did they really do it? Look, uh, as we've said uh, in this season, we've got Gebekli Tepe, you know, how was that built? Could it have been Atlanteans? Were they? Did they have something to do with it? We've said about the pyramids. How was things trans, uh, transported? And obviously, we're all saying that they used water and things like that. What was Atlantis known for? Water. And we said it when we said about the carvings in Quebec Tepe, where they were. I mentioned that someone said they could have been carved using water. Could it have been? Could it have all been done from Atlantis and literally shipped over? put where it was meant to be and built there because you made a very good point now the reason that i'm going back and mentioning the gebeko tepe episode is because um i've just recently edited it uh ready to go out for you guys to listen into but you mentioned it quite well about the the ice age there and things would have been easy to transport because let's face it if humans uh, did we, we were around during an ice age we survived it did we learn how to survive it and utilize the the planet the way it was so could the people of atlantis if it was there they built everything they transported it out because they were too covered under the ice that they've gone let's go and build further out you said that people sort of spread word of mouth because landmass was easier to travel across because there was more of it because we were closer yeah. together because we hadn't fully separated you know we were still the the islands were still the continents were still shifting now the way that I'm so the way I was doing my research today and looking at things like that and sort of picturing everything together and putting it all into place, it's weird if you look at the timeline and how it all connects together, especially from what we've discussed from like the the history side of things. They all sort of like do can co in line with each other and sort of bring that timeline together if this civilization of Atlantis was real. So if this race was real, that you know we didn't, you know they didn't call themselves the Aryan race. That's what they've been dubbed as the Aryan race, is like the the ultimate human specimen, basically. Could that have been a possibility? But with that, then where did the calamity come in that we know destroyed Atlantis that we told the stories of? What happened? You know, did the Ice Age have something to do with it? Did it? Did, we know that sea levels rise and we know that sea levels are rising could it have just been it was there and the sea levels have risen and unfortunately they weren't as as advanced as we think they are and their structures were destroyed we know there are structures under the ocean we've seen them you know we've uh not long ago only a few years ago um in the uh search for everything uh, where they've been looking for atlantis they actually found a brick road off the strait of gibraltar uh, which apparently leads further out to sea. The images of it are quite airy, uh, which will be on our social media that you can see. And like I say, it's just this random brick road under the ocean that just keeps going and going and going. I mean, I don't know if they've explored how far it actually goes. You know me in the ocean. When I start reading about it, I stop because it terrifies me. It's my biggest fear. Always will be. 
asking me to go and search for Atlantis is a definite no-no for me because don't do the ocean. But what if we drain the sea and then you'd go? That's fine. That's fine. Drain the sea. I, I will go. I I will gladly take the first steps down there. So, if we if we're bringing everything back around, what we need to do is go back to the Ark of the Covenant. We get yep. Aaron's rod because that's the rod that Moses used to split the sea, and then you use that to go look for Atlantis. There we go. I mean, I'm not going to lie though. The way that we've put these episodes in order has just really been a happy coincidence more than anything. Yeah. It really has. And it wasn't until today when I was realizing, when I was looking over my notes and going, ah, I'm going to admit it. It's all kind of gone in line. <laughs> I didn't realize. Now, we obviously, like I say, we, we're told that Atlanta sank to the bottom of the ocean and. You know, they do say uh, they used advanced technology. Now, I was actually watching clips from a documentary. Now, this documentary, I believe, was in the 80s. I can't quite remember fully. Uh, it was only a clip that I managed to find on YouTube. And again, I will find it and put it on our socials for you to see as well. And this is where Disney comes into it a little bit. Because this guy's talking about how they had modern technology, like that their own, they were technologically advanced by using the power of crystals to harness the power of crystals. And as I'm watching this clip, I'm like, that's the Disney movie. But the Disney movie didn't come out until, what, 2000s? Mm -hmm. It was 2001, I think it was. That Might be a mistake. Crystals, huh? They use like, uh, yeah, they use no, like... Yeah, uh, that's, no, one of my research I came across, I think it was in Plato's work, he mentioned Oracalcum. Yeah. But it was a metal, wasn't it? It wasn't a crystal. Uh, I think so. And that was like what they use as a power source to help power everything. Now, as a a, a child sort of growing up, uh, when I heard the story of Atlantis, I always did picture it as a city under the sea with a giant dome over it to protect it from the sea. You know, that's how I envisioned it. I don't know why. I don't know if I've seen it somewhere and that just stuck in my like mind. Like a reverse fishbowl. Exactly. And it's just keeping everybody else out. But... I mean, when you picture Atlantis now, if it was real, if let's like I say, for all intents and purposes, it is. How do you picture it? I mean, given the research I did for this episode, my idea of it has changed because before that, it was the fictional words that we created thinking about Atlantis, of it being like the high tech civilization that fell to their own sort of hubris and sunk to the sea because their own technological advances had gotten too big yeah but that's not the picture that's originally painted by plato and the stories before they were just a, civ a civilization of humans that got unlucky by the sounds of it because they sunk and it... yeah but the age of it would have put it to look more closer to sort of Egyptian structures. So I would have imagined, you know, like when they talk about the city with the concentric circles, you'd imagine like a, a temple that is a pyramid in the middle more yeah. than pillars. Because you don't have many of those sort of pillar-looking structures, like more ornate structures like that. Yeah, when we look at Egypt, we don't see it like that. We do just see, as you said, like a pyramid and their sort of architecture from then. But now imagine, like, the most obvious ones, Pyramids of Giza. Yeah. Grab them and just submerge the base level. You still see the bottom of them. And then put sort of a Venice sort of situation where there's just um, canals that people use to travel around and buildings on top of that. That's okay. my interpretation of what I re read about Atlantis. It's like... Pyramids were the temples, and then the rest of it was just off the water, and that's how the main city looked. But when you look at it, so they had water in the main city, but it was the highest point of the island. Yeah. And there was like ten, what I don't know what you call them, like shires. What do you call them? States within Atlantis, yeah, yeah. one belonging to each of the brothers, uh, and they were like more like village places, like normal places. You they weren't as on as the city of Atlantis was. The, yeah, the capital was what we know as being the most uh, iconic looking thing. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I get where you're coming from with that one. Uh, I kind of like your vision there of what you've got of Atlantis because I think, you know what, if it was 
still around. I reckon that's pretty much what it would look like, you know, with a, a pyramid type sort of temple sort of thing. Because I, I agree with you. I, I agree that it, you know, if anything, it was more Egyptian than it was Greek or Roman. You know, it's just it, Egyptians the closest we've got in terms of what we can think of close to it. But you've got to imagine this was before the Egyptians as well, because yeah. it predates them too. But it's it's where they got their inspiration from. Yeah. So it looked different, but still close to it. Yeah. I mean, with Atlantis, we know that it is probably the most you know told story of all time. You know, I mean, you can ask anybody about Atlantis and they'll know of it. They might not know too much information, but they'll know of the lost city of Atlantis or Atlantis as a whole, which can't be said for a lot of the things that we've done. Whereas I've spoken to people, especially like uh, my other half and her friends and even some of our friends that we've spoken to. And we've gone through like things we've done in this season where we've talked about Mothman. Everyone's like, ooh. What? You know, um, yeah, exactly. Maybe he was there. Maybe he was at the Calamity when the, you know, the island sank. Again, it's all coming together. <laughs> um, Mathman was there at the fall of Atlantis. He was. He was. I, 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 he was just taking a, he was taking a pew, watching it all unfold. Um, Good thing but, he had wings. He could get away. <laughs> exactly. But everybody knows the, st- the, the story of Atlantis. And obviously a lot of people are fascinated by it. And, I mean, we can't talk about Atlantis without, um, you know, talking about one man's ambition to find Atlantis because he believed in the Aryan race and that they were... The... He has been a consistent thread through all of these, hasn't he? <laughs> he has. He, and he... he was after the Ark. He was after the Holy Grail. Like, what else was there? You know, he's... There was some, yeah. I'm sure there was something else that I linked him to as well, but I can't remember what now. But, but like, yeah... But yeah, Adolf Hitler was looking for Atlantis because he believed that the Aryan race would be, you know, that he, what, well, Atlantean. basically, what he wanted to find the Aryan race. That was the whole thing, and he believed. And I don't know where he gets his information from or what he believed, but he believed that. Jesus Christ would have been the part of the Aryan race, and he would have been a white man who was blonde with blue eyes. But uh, how? <laughs> I don't get it. Because he believed that. I mean, uh, he believed that he was from Atlantis. That was where you were in Jerusalem. Yeah, and that's the bit I don't get is that he believed he was from Atlantis, and I'm just sort of like, it, it absolutely baffles me. And then they believed that, obviously, when Atlantis was sinking, that the Aryan race basically scarpered, got out of there as quick as they could. And for some bizarre reason, uh, Hitler and the SS went to um, the, the Himalayas because <laughs> he believed that he would find the Aryan race there. I'm sorry, but I don't know if you ever looked at pictures of people that are at the Himalayas. Even back then to now, not much has changed. And I can tell you now, they're not six foot tall, blonde hair, blue eyes. All that's all that's telling me is that Hitler had a type. Oh, that's all I'm saying. Hitler definitely had a type. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. I ain't going too much into that one. <laughs> um, but when we when we did the episode on the pyramids you said you had some information as well that you come up with uh, about atlantis and the gods is that what you were discussing earlier uh, is that what you oh, yeah. got from there yeah yeah because like the gods with the entomology of sort of the way the world works the gods always were translated from another so no one ever especially that part of the world had a unique god like they were always like translating a god from before or changing them to fit their current ideals yeah so the gods as you worked back were just the other gods so the egyptian gods were the older ones and they then were morphed into sort of the greek ones and the roman ones and so on and so forth yeah so atlantis is built on the that same idea of those original gods yeah but then if you're saying the Aryan and the only thing we've got which is plato's uh writing about it they were demigods yeah so maybe his aryan race were just demigods 
Maybe there were, you know. Uh, I'm, you know, again, maybe he did take some writings a little bit too seriously. He read too much into things. I mean, he was a man drunk with power. I mean, he was grasping at straws because he knew he was losing the war and obviously he'd do anything to sort of make sure that his name was forever solidified in the history books. And let's be fair, he did well. It is. At that. He did well. He did. He got his name in the history books and forever it will stay. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think I think he wanted to go down as the one who found the Aryan race or even found Atlantis. Infamy is still fame. It is, it is. But he never found Atlantis and he never found the Aryan race. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to go into a couple of theories and some other random stories that we've got of Atlantis. But that'll be right after this very quick break. As we resurface from the break, we plunge into the age old question Is Atlantis a sunken reality or a mere mirage of fiction? I love it. <laughs> I love it, Omer. You know what, right? This this, this this, sort of stuff is already just... It, season one was just a test run, folks. <laughs> just wait till season two. Omer's going to be doing more script stuff. Omer's going to be doing more intros. <laughs> Get ready for it. It's coming. Um, but yeah, let's finish season one first. So with your research into Atlantis, and I'm going to do this one a little bit earlier than I usually do, where we wait towards the end. Um, Atlantis, what do you believe? Do you believe that the lost city of Atlantis is real, or the continent of Atlantis, or what? Do you believe it was real? Given the way it's described in Plato's work, because we've got nothing before then, and everything that's come after Plato's work hasn't been based on any facts it's just based off Plato's work. Everyone's like, yeah. oh, Plato said this, so we'll use that as fact. And then and went off it. Most of the time you read it, though, everyone's taken everything Plato said and taken everything as fact except its location. They keep changing the location. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I feel like people are focused on the wrong thing. Let's assume that most of it was wrong, but there was a fact in there that an island existed and it sunk. And if we take off, like, the location being wrong, the fact that they were even gods or an advanced civilization, we have a history of islands being sunk. Yes. Yes, we do. They're, like, before, like, back when Plato wrote the, the, the wrote down about Atlantis, um, there was the Minoan eruption not far from Athens that would have been felt. And I think the waves of that were, like, that big that China felt it. Mm. So, like, that's a Minoan eruption that sunk an island. There was... I only recently, in the research, I found uh, Doggerland. There was an island... Yep. Well, there was a landmass between mainland UK and the rest of Europe, running all the way up to, like, Denmark. Um, when the ice, ice started melting, it all got sunk, except one island, which was Dogger Island, which sat between the UK... And mainland Europe, and then there was an underwater earthquake or an eruption, I'm not sure which of the two, and then the sea levels raise again and Doggerland got sunk. And we're only just realising it's there. So mm -hmm. you've got, like, the idea of Atlantis all over the world as, you know, I say, I yep. say it starts happening, yep. uh, the, the last ice age, and then eruptions or earthquakes that cause land masses to dip. So let's say he was talking about a landmass that did dip under the sea, but he used that as the basis for his story to then, as he does, talk about a philosophical point of the hubris and let's make them more exciting. Let's make yep. them gods. Yep. There's a story of gods already all over the place, so why not use them? Exactly. Um, so in a way, the city could have been real because, I don't. again, like you say, don't think they were an advanced species. I don't think they were an Aryan race. I reckon it was just an island that did sink, and well, it didn't sink. You know, you know, nature took control. It it was flooded. And that's, it happens. We've we've had it. Um, I think it was last summer. I don't know what it was like the rest of the world, but here in the UK, we had uh, like reservoirs that were drying up that found cities that we never knew were there. You know, because we we basically built over them to build reservoirs and old churches have come sticking out. So we know these things have happened and obviously the the sea levels are rising and we know there's islands that are slowly, you know, going into the ocean. We know that. Um erosion happens. All these things happen over time. 
uh, I said it when we, you know, I said we needed another ice age just to sort of cool the earth down and sort of bring us back some landmass, you know. I mean, some of the, some people believe, uh, and these are pretty much people that are well respected in their field as well, have been looking for Atlantis because they've taken Plato's word as gospel. And I suppose with a man like Plato who had such, you know, esteem and things like that, you know, people do believe him. And, you know, it, it shows because money has been spent on looking for it still. There's new modern technology that are being used, like the, as I said previously, light R technology is literally scanning the ocean as well to see. But what if it's not in the ocean? So that's the theory of, what's it, the Eye of the Sahara? There you go. Thank you. You got there before me. Yeah, because that is pretty much as it was described as concentric circles. Because Yeah, Sahara... the, it was identical to the city of Atlantis. Yeah. It was, it, it matches to the Eye of the Sahara. And it's, I, and I you've got to remember, this... like, what is it, 11,000 years ago, there would have been water where there wasn't today. Exactly. Oh, now, a desert makes as much sense as a sea. Yeah, because they didn't say what, how it sank. <laughs> they didn't, you know. And, it, and if I'm, if I'm right, it's on the east coast of Africa, so yeah. that would have been in the Atlantic. There you go. And this is one of the things I saw as well. I saw this on TikTok where someone said that... west, west. I got that backwards. <laughs> I saw it on TikTok where someone said that can't be possible because they. Uh, the size measurements were all out of sync and they're not correct the size but how do we Plato know didn't that... give exact measurements exactly now how how do we know the measurements because let's be honest we only had a certain amount of text to work from that nobody actually gave us the measurement and even then measurements no, could he, be completely he, he different to what they are he now he described it in sort of rough estimates to to masses that were known. Yeah. This is why it was like twice the size of Spain, because that was a known landmass. It's a good way to describe it. But like that's the size of the island itself. Yeah. But the city would have been much smaller, as yeah. the eye of the Sahara is much smaller, because that's just the city, not the full island. Exactly. So obviously and everyone's going, oh, that recently discovered eye of the Sahara. No, it was discovered years ago. We've known about it for years. You know, mm. it's just that we people are saying that it looks similar to how we've got descriptions. Another one is, as I said earlier, um, apparently it was described as being um, the at the Pyrrhus of Heracles, which is now known as the Strait of Gibraltar, and mm. which is where I said that they. Uh, in recent years have found a path there uh, a brick road under the ocean that leads further into the ocean and obviously like I, said, I don't know if how much of it's been explored if it's been fully explored or not uh, i didn't quite take a look at that because at the end of the day uh again jumping ahead myself a little bit here i'm sort of loving living in the mystery of it all so i didn't want to sort of <laughs> find that this road led to like nowhere you know <laughs> it's just oh that they're still exploring it i don't know but i mean it's it, again sort of explaining where it is it we'd never had a, a definitive idea of its location because another documentary that i watched said that there's a city in portugal um that is described exactly the same way as atlantis and that portugal is atlantis you know uh and again i was like okay so where's your evidence and apparently there is uh, a little city that has, does have concentric circles with water in between and land and uh a, like a church on top you sort of so, look like you've come to a realization I like something because, like, I only just realized, like, I only was told this recently, but um, J.K. Rowling, when she was doing the research for Harry Potter, yeah. took the style of the uniform from Port a Portuguese school yeah. that do wear capes and everything. And I'm like, maybe wizards were real and they were in Atlantis. There you go. <laughs> oh, wow. We've just blown this thing wide open. 
Oh, we again. We've we've give you more questions than answers. <laughs> we've give you new questions, questions that have never been asked before. I mean, that's a great revelation for the end of season it one. It wasn't advanced <laughs> technology. It was they were just wizardry, wizards, literally. <laughs> wow, mind blown there, Omar. Jesus, we're coming up to the end of the episode, and already you're blowing our minds, and we're asking questions that have never been asked before. Um, they just hadn't learnt Reparo yet, so when it sunk, they were like, oh, <laughs> we haven't got a spell for this. <laughs> Who would have thought that wizards were all to do with it all along? Oh, I feel like that a... needs to be in the extended universe of Harry <laughs> Potter now. You're an Atlantean, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> and like I mentioned, because it was like the dilution of the blood of Poseidon that lessened their godly abilities, that's why you can have muggles and wizards because the wizards are the ones with poseidon's blood yeah the muggles are the ones so diluted they don't have it anymore okay As... I, i'm writing this now it's my own <laughs> fan fiction <laughs> I, I honestly if i see you on the next series of ancient aliens you know i, I at least want to be on there with you <laughs> that's one of my favorite theories about atlantis like as much as i can go off like you know the facts and say it's not real it probably is an island that sunk i love the ancient aliens idea behind it an advanced alien civilization comes down because then that would also explain why we think it was gods yeah it was just aliens who are compatible with humans and can crossbreed so this is why the aryan race comes in yeah um, the island sunk because they were using technology we weren't aware of and apparently back then wasn't there like theories that there was technologies that was rivaling nuclear technology yeah that we didn't uh, this is all on the ancient alien side not none of this was like written down or factual i'm sure there's like we'll go into more of ancient aliens later in others in the other series at uh, seasons um but like atlantis being like an ancient alien colony that started breeding with humans to become less and yeah. then losing that ability to control their own technology and then sinking or let's say the aliens were like, ah, we left children with very powerful toys. Let's make the the world think we're sinking it, but we're just going to take it back home. Yeah. That would explain why it went missing and we can't find it. It would. It would. And again, that is one of the theories that's out there. Uh, I believe that the uh, the race that meant to have come to Earth was the Anunnaki, um, which mm -hmm. uh, we've also heard about in... Uh, Egypt, they helped build the pyramids. Um, you know, we, I even mentioned it on the uh, Pyramids of Giza episode as well. You know, it, it all does come full circle, uh, the way I'm seeing it, to be honest. I, I mean, do, do you want to know if the truth is that there is a, a city of Atlantis that had this advanced civilization and they are the key to everything that's ever happened on earth and they're the reason that we built all these monuments and we've got the pyramids and you know the, the there is something out there do you want to believe that do you believe that or are you more on the side of no. mother, mother nature just sank an island and that was it factually mother nature sank an island the idea yeah. of atlantis and everything it's created from its idea just like the Holy Grail story of it was a story that we latched onto. Yeah. It was a thing used in every story. Atlantis has evolved over time. Because it started as Plato saying, oh, it's an island of gods that sank because of their hubris. Yeah. Then it became, oh, when it sank, they lived. They live under the sea now. Then it became, oh, it was an advanced civilization that sank and now live under the sea. To yeah. now everyone has superpowers on Atlantis. Yeah. And it's like the way that story evolves, and I think it's only just going to get better over time as we just rethink like how we like Atlantis to be. So the idea of Atlantis is way better than the facts of Atlantis. I completely, I completely agree with you on that one. You know, it's... Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of words here, and I can't think of anything. Because... <sighs> I'm like you in in a sense is that I do think that there was an island that has just sank and it Plato knew of this island or has read about an island that sank and has used that 
as part of one of his lessons and uh, again it's just spiraled it's just one of those things that we've gripped onto it's a story that we're just going to keep passing down throughout history throughout all our time we'll never find it even with the technology that we have now we'll never find it but you know we I, we as human beings are always amazed by wonderment and we will keep looking and we'll keep believing that something there you know that curiosity to know more exactly i mean we 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 use these sorts of things to make our lives and our planet seem a little bit more interesting because i mean as honestly as interesting as being born and you know living on this giant rock that's floating around in space as interesting as that is we all still need that something there to sort of believe in something, something more to look for yeah you know one of those yearning questions you'll you can speak to anybody do you believe in Atlantis? Yeah, I believe it was there. No, it was just a story that's gone out of control. Oh, yeah, well, it was an island, wasn't it? You know, everyone's going to have different stories. And we've said it all the way through from the very first episode of the Ark of the Covenant. Do you believe the Ark was real? Some people do, some people don't. You know, the Bible tells us one story. Fred from the shop down the road tells you a different story. You know, there's going to be... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't discount Fred. <laughs> don't just say Fred. Fred's done his research. Fred did do his research. <laughs> uh, he knows and where that, it is. He, yeah, he's, he's found it. Um, and that's the thing. I think with this season, as we've gone through, uh, like I say, it's our first season. We're still very new to this and we're still trying to get to grips with everything that we're doing and what we, you know, hoping that you are liking the show as we're going along. Um, and if you've stuck till episode 10, thank you so much for being with us all the way through um i mean i i've thoroughly enjoyed doing this season because i've enjoyed the looking at the mystery and i've actually enjoyed doing it with you because it's fun to watch you when you've come on and you've gone oh yeah me, not, yeah. yeah you've gone oh i've not really done much or i fell down this massive rabbit hole from the first episode you were like i've done a little bit of research and then come on episode three four you're like down a massive rabbit hole. I've lost four days. I've not showered. Um, completely forgot I was meant to be in work. But I did find this out. You know. Um, so it's it's been interesting. It's been fun. Because it's sort of revitalized my curiosity in these things. Everything that we've done. Like I say. Even the, you know the mundane things like you know everyone knows the story of jack the ripper and some of the things that we come up with was fantastic and i think that's one of the things i've enjoyed the most is that we've we've gone through this we've done the research we've looked into it and we've both been able to tell each other something that we didn't look into in our research and i hope we've done the same for you guys out there listening we hope that you know we've picked up on something that you haven't before and you've enjoyed it and we hope that you leave in comments and tell us your theories and things like that um, so on that note, I'm going to say to you, Omer, Atlantis, if you wanted to, if you, if, if you knew, would you be happy knowing, or are you happy living in just the bewilderment of it all? I'm happy with the idea that it was just an island that sank, but the fiction that comes off the back of it is the best thing ever. Like we've got some <laughs> amazing like TV shows, books, series, theories, like all of them are just so fun to read. And without the initial idea of it, it wouldn't exist. So I, I'm happy not knowing what really happened to it, but so yeah. happy with what came from it. Yeah, I agree. I honestly agree with you wholeheartedly. I couldn't have said it any better myself. Um, but that is an end to our first season of Caffeinated Conspiracies. Um, we hope you've enjoyed the show. Please do leave us a comment. Uh, keep subscribing to the show watch our tiktoks our youtubes um you know we facebook x as it's now called um instagram make sure you're following us on all the socials and you are keeping up to date and we will have an announcement for season two very soon um with a with a date we're, we're hoping to come back in january um we will give you a precise date very soon so it won't be too long, but I think when this episode comes out, we will be towards the very end of the end of the year. So we 
do hope you have had a fantastic year we hope you've enjoyed the past few weeks with us uh, you've listened to the show and you've enjoyed it uh, and if you're only just catching up with it and you've started and we've launched season two and you're only just listening now where have you been catch up come on <laughs> season two's great <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've never recorded it yet, and I'm already saying it's great. Because I know what's coming. I know what research I've done. It will be amazing. It, it is just... amazing. We, we, that makes we... us sound like time travelers, actually. Yeah. It's good. It's amazing. You just go listen to it now. We've not done any of the recording yet. We've not yet. done anything it's yet. It's amazing. Um, but please do join us for our second season, like I say, in January. Um, but for myself, I want to say thank you so much for listening. I've in, I've thoroughly enjoyed doing this. I've enjoyed spending time with my best friend. You know, where we get to sit down and we get to chat absolute rubbish every week. It's been fun. I've really enjoyed it. Well, May, you got anything you want to say? No, I've literally, for me, like this whole show has just been a learning experience because I don't care <laughs> about most conspiracies. I like, I hear them and they carry on, but I I never look into them. But like the things you can find out when you start looking under the rocks it's it's so much fun i mean if you you don't have to believe every conspiracy theory out there i still don't but just reading the stuff that comes from them is amazing i recommend everyone should just to bring some joy to your life or just broaden your horizons i mean back in the day omer i mean we've done a lot of research on this show and a lot of it has been history based. If our history teacher could see us now, <laughs> He'd be I should... very confused. I wouldn't mind though, oh, but she they, would be. yeah, she would be. She separated us at school because we weren't doing anything. We weren't doing any work, and apparently, we didn't work well together. I'm sorry, but we've just done ten episodes where we've been able to work together, do our research, and actually have a good time. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm out of coffee. Have we given you answers? Have we left you with more questions than you came in with? You can let us know on all our socials. Links are in the description. But be sure to leave us a great review to please the overlords. You can find all our episodes wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure you tune in next week when we have a fresh pot of coffee, some more crazy theories. But for now, I've been Glenn. And I've been Omer. See you next time on Caffeinated Conspiracies.